Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings. West Ham United nil. Everton won a fine victory for the Toffees on the road. Gets us up to 10th place. Uh, 10th place? 10 points. It's took us up a place um, with Forrester's goal difference now worse than Everton's. Uh, I won't say why, why it's worse, but something happened today that made it worse. Um, so we've gone up a place and we've gone up to 10 points, which is uh, fantastic. Fantastic news. Let's get into it. Player ratings. Jordan Pickford in goal. Made uh, two two saves in the game. One big one towards the end. One against Kudos, which I don't think it was counted. But listen, you've got to make those saves in this day and age because you, even if that flag goes up, you don't know What's going to happen afterwards? They could have said, oh, well, the ball deflected off the defender, so therefore he's on side. It's happened. We've seen it happen. Um, so Pickford done his job fantastically well today. Uh, some big moments taking the ball as well and just being a bit cocky. He got him got a yellow card for getting, in, getting over to the referee and um, kicking off about the kudos bit as well so good to see that from him as well good to see that passion from him as well from Jordan Pickford so uh, seven and a half for him Nathan Patterson started the game a little bit slowly um, some moments early on in the game and I thought oh god here we go he's getting rinsed and he did a couple of times to be honest but he settled down massively in the game and Again, said this on me on on the instant match reaction. You could see the confidence come back into him. You could see him just doing the job bit by bit. Um, winning tackles, winning little challenges, not letting people go past him, winning his battle. That's all we ever say in football. Basically, that's all anyone ever says at any level is win your battle. If you win your battle, if enough people on the pitch win their battle, then you'll win the game. And that's what we did today as a team. And it takes those collective performances to win games like this, of course. It takes the goals, and that's what, that is the difference. And that's what Sean Dyche will say is the difference between these kind of games and maybe the home games earlier on in the season is putting the ball in the back of the net. And, you know, maybe he's right. <laughs> but because he's looking for that level of consistency. Um, but he picked himself up and he start you know and certainly the second half i thought he was excellent uh three ground duels one out of eight two aerial duels one out of three so that's good um 56 56 touches of the ball 72 percent pass accuracy and as i said he just grew as the game went on um and that's good because we were saying before the game and when people talk about him playing that he he is um he's got to win the shirt hasn't he he's got to win that shirt he's got probably two big opportunities this week to do that he's already got through one of them if he does that again on 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 wednesday night hopefully if he starts then he's got a big opportunity to go into the brighton game keeping hold of that shirt and i think a lot of people i think a lot of people hope he does because he's a young lad and at the end of the day we all want to see Young young lads, like not co coming through, or, or whether they bought like him and Brantwaite were, or whatever. Young lads playing in the share week in and week out, and making a team. So, yeah. So Jared, uh, Nathan Patterson, uh, I would give a seven to for today. Vitaly Michalenko, another really good game for Vitaly Michalenko. Um, I thought the last few weeks defensively, he's been he's been excellent. And that's all he can do, isn't it? That's all he can do is do that that side of the job. If more comes out of it, listen, no no issue in saying, you know, I, I want full-backs who bomb forward. We all want full-backs that bomb forward. But the first thing you got to do is do what do what you've, you've, you're supposed to do, which is defend. And I think Mikhalenko, again, stronger, fitter, faster, whatever you want to say, getting, getting to grips with the Premier League, been here nearly two years now, the same as Nathan Patterson. Uh, obviously, he got into the side a lot quicker than Nathan Patterson, and so he settled in a lot quicker. Had his ups and downs, but I do think he showed a much bigger level of consistency since he got back in the side. Um, he's been playing for Ukraine regularly. Listen, this, this is a lad who's got to deal with a lot of other things, obviously, hasn't he? Um, but 
defensively, I thought today again highlighted this. We spoke about this in the match preview with Jared Bowen is their most um, creative player, scores their goals, and he kept them relatively quiet today. A couple of moments, but um, won six of his ten ground duels, won one of his two aerial duels. Um, only dribble pass twice, six tackles, loves the tackles, four interceptions, four clearances, uh, 79% pass accuracy. Got got into the final third a couple of times, put some crosses in as well, which is nice to see. In fact, this heat map is in the opposite half of the pitch rather than that. So, um, good performance from Michalenko today. Really good performance from him. So, uh, I'll give him a 7.9 for today's performance. Um Jared uh that's Tarkovsky, let's talk about Tarkovsky first. Sets the tone, I think, would have a fight in an empty room, I think, if it was on the pitch. Seems like the nicest man in the world off the pitch. Tark, he seems like a good laugh, seems like a bit of a joker, but on the pitch he's not he's no messing. And if there's a 50-50 to win, he'll go and win it. And if there's an argument to start, he'll go and start it. Because I think he knows that being the captain, you've got to You've got to get people going. You've got to um, create something in the side. You've got to create that. I mean, it's it's you've got to make sure. Obviously, that doesn't boil over, and I don't think it has ever, ever has boiled over. Obviously, with Tarkowski, um, but there's a there's a level that you see with but certainly having someone like Brantwaite next to him. He knows he's got to he's got to be showing him the ropes. And he's got to be the aggressor. Brantwaite's quite laid back, but obviously you, you need someone who's going to be the aggressor back there. It's something we've... I think it's took a while to get this out of Tarky. I don't know whether it's because he's been given the captain's armband or whether it's Sean Dyche, but I felt like early on in his Everton career he wasn't really doing that. But I think of, of late, I think you've seen that he knows he's got to go on the pitch. And he's got to be, number one, he's got to be disciplined in his performances and his performances have got to be level and consistent. But he's got to wind people up and get in people's faces and be the aggressor and be strong. I think you saw that today. Um, and certainly for the moment with Kudos, gets people wound up, gets other people involved. Uh, one four, three of his four ground duels, one, only one, actually two of his four aerials duels today, which is quite surprising up against Antonio. Um, dribble passed only once, one interception, no tackles, so obviously not someone who dives in. Something that's gone missing from the um, from the centre-back's playbook probably is tackling with the way the game is now. 49 touches, 80% pass accuracy. So, uh, James Tarkowski, I would give a 7.4. Uh, Jared Branthwaite got man of the match from the TV here in the UK, which was nice, nice to see. You know, it's not. <laughs> I was watching, um, it was the Newcastle game last night. I only caught the end. I wasn't really watching, but I just turned on towards the end to see what the score was. And Alan Smith was the co commentator, or the colour color commentator, as they call them in America. And um, it's his job to give man of the match. And he's. <laughs> And he said, um, it was Callum Wilson, and he went to, Callum Wilson's not been the best player on the pitch today, but he's had the most influence, and that's why he's the man of the player of the match. And I was like, well, if he hasn't, he's not, if he's not the best player on the pitch, then he's not man of the match, is he? It's like when Salah got it last week, he wasn't man of the match, and that's what happens. They, they play to the favourites, they know they're going to into him after the game, and therefore they give him it. But Jared Brantwaite was the best player on the pitch today, and was the man of the match. I... I I think from that point of view, um, this lad just ex just exudes class and calmness, and I think that was for everyone to see today. Um, won two out of four ground duels, three out of four aerial duels, uh, clearances ten, block shots one, interceptions two, tackles two, dribble pass none, touches sixty four, seventy two percent pass accuracy, um, yeah. This 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 lad has got everything I think to be a top centre back. Now, obviously, Everton are going to have to match another player's ambitions. Which, but let's not worry about that right now. He's just signed a new contract, and for him, I think this is the best place for him to be because he's learning on the job in the Premier League, where he's 
not saying he would go on anywhere else, but sometimes players like this get swallowed up if they if they do something stupid. He's playing every week in the in in the Premier League. What I love, so my I so my actually I was tweeting about it during the game, saying the amount of players you can't use two feet in the Premier League is is not just Everton, a lot of the team like even like people like Marcus Rashford, who are like top players, who can't use both feet. It's like go out after training, grab a ball and just go and kick a ball into a goal or against a wall or whatever they or grab a coach or whatever it is and just do an hour's worth. But this lad what he's done is because you can't tell whether he's left footed or he's right footed. He slotted perfectly on our left-hand side. So it's not another player who's out of position because the team has got quite a lot of balance about him, about it, in terms of that side of things. But having that balance on the left-hand side doesn't half make a difference. And play, he's not going with his wrong foot and all these things. I watched, I was watching, um, I was watching the El Clasico yesterday and Barcelona scored their first goal because the centre-back went went to tackle the ball with his wrong foot, essentially. It's like, come on. He's a professional footballer. You should be you should be able to play with two feet or at least be able to do something with your other foot. Okay, you're going to have one foot stronger than the other. But um, I thought it's not always about... It's not always about, by the way, how many headers you win or how many tackles you make. It's about how you carry yourself. How do you look to the opposition? Do you look nervous? Do you look like someone who can be targeted during the game? How are you carrying yourself? I mentioned Patterson before. There's been moments with Patterson where his confidence is not there and he looks like someone with the... If I was a winger, I'd be like, I'm having a go at you today. But Antwight doesn't look like that ever for me. He looks like a, he looks the way he speaks and the way he you see him having a go at other players or reacting to situations. He looks older than his years, more experienced than his years. And I think if you were coming up against him, you'd think, yeah, I'm gonna have a difficult game here today. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. He's not this kid's not a pushover. This kid's not gonna fall for like old school tricks or whatever. So. You know, I I, lo- I love him to bits. I think he's I think he's such a top player, um, and you know it's it's up to us as a club to um, do everything we can really to just keep playing him. Make sure make sure he plays week in and week out. Make sure I mean we all I think you know we all love him as a fan base. I think that's important as well that we that we stay behind him. He might have dips in form if he does. Then let's be with him on the journey when when that happens. But so far he's been very very solid and is doing his job brilliantly. So um, for me, I would give him a eight point two for today's performance. Um, great to see in midfield. Uh, Amadou Onana, I thought was excellent as well today. Um, Sixty three touches, eighty nine percent pass accuracy, won ten. 10 of his 14 ground duels, won two of his three aerial duels. Um, yeah, just just again an excellent performance for him, I, I think. Um, tackles, six tackles, loves a tackle. Um, the lad since moving back to the number, like the number, his proper position again. Talking about the balance of the team and I'm talking about letting players do what they're supposed to do. Onana, like, for the first, certainly for last season, never really played in his proper position. And the first few games of this season he didn't, but I don't know what it is. He came back from the international break, he played for Belgium, maybe the manager had watched him couple of, play for Belgium and decided now was the time, now was the time to get him in there. Maybe that, putting him in there, meant James Garner could come into the side and... There was be more of a position for him, but I thought Onana was was excellent today. I just thought his all round game, and I, I mentioned it before. In towards the end of the game, I think it was actually past ninety minutes. He's running with the ball, and Sochek has got hold of him, and Sochek's trying to drag him down. And the easiest thing would have been to just go down, but he didn't. He was determined not to go down. He was determined to stay on his feet. He was determined to keep going. And I think there's been a lot more of that recently as well. 
of that thing. Like, I'll I'll show everybody. And again, he's one of those players where you look at him and think, if you get your game together, if you put all those things together, the sky's the limit for you. For you. And, and if you have two or three of these players in your team, then it's going to make your team better, isn't it? It's just going to make your team better. If if you've got a spine, certainly, if players, Pickford is on it, if, if Brantwaite and, and Tarky, if, if Onana's on it, if Dominic Carvalho Loon's on it, your spine, we always talk about this in football, about the spine of the team. If your spine is is consistent and playing well, everything around it will fall into place. And I just thought he was excellent today. I, I really did. So, um, again, some there'll be some big battles ahead. And today was a battle for him, but I thought he came come through it really well. Um and I give him an eight for today's performance. Um, James Garner a little bit, a little bit quieter than Onana. So similar, similar to last week's performance. I thought he was better than last week's performance. Don't get me wrong, he was more, he was all over the pitch really. Um, ground duels won five of ten, so fifty percent. He had no aerial duels. Leaves that to Onana. Um, Forty-seven. Touches, 83% pass accuracy. No real effect in the final third, I'd say, in terms of creating opportunities. Um, no key passes, no shots on target. Um, but just, yeah, listen. An all right game. Nothing to write home about, but an all right game. Done his job. Just, just got in there and done his job today. So, um, I think sometimes, sometimes from a centre midfielder, you're looking for fireworks, and that's not always there. They're not always there. Four tackles, three interceptions. But I just thought he did his job today, to be honest. And and when you're away from home, and you've got to dig in, they're the performances that you need more than sometimes being all flashy listen as i said it wasn't amazing first half he looked a little bit i was like question looked a little bit off it but um and in, in the end done what he needed to do to um play his part in the victory so i would give him i'd give him a seven um jack harrison Spawned a huge chance, didn't he, in the first half? Huge opportunity, three on one. Never really got, got going today. Done his job defensively. Um, in terms of getting into shape, not maybe in the numbers. Ground duels, one, two out of nine. Um, two tackles. You want more from him. Only twenty-eight touches, eighty percent, eighty-six percent pass accuracy. You want more from him. But he does hold the position, so the manager will will really like that. Works hard, works hard for the team. Doesn't give things up, and I think compliments what the manager what the manager wants. Got an assist, of course. Let's not let's not forget that. Got an assist. Um, busy without being amazing. End product sometimes is an amazing, but growing. Don't forget what's this? What's that? Is th- third start, third start in an Everton shirt. Bournemouth, Liverpool, West Ham, F- and Villa wasn't Villa, yeah, yeah. Um, so will Im- will improve, will improve, will improve in the final third. Wasn't terrible today. <laughs> wasn't amazing. Uh, I'll give him a 6.9 for today's performance. On the other side, quite similar for Dwight McNeil, to be honest. Um, in terms of offence, similar, similar like defensive, again, will run all day, this lad. That's well, you know, will run all day for you. Um, won seven of his ten ground duels, though, so defensively, much, much better. Um Tackles five, interceptions one. Again, will work hard for the team, and does work hard for the team. 
one shot. I think he had a shot late on. The keeper tipped, just tipped over. He will. Wait, he's as honest as the days long. Dwight McNeil. That's 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 the most important thing with him, isn't it? So when he's when he's not having a great game, offensively, he'll he'll dig in and he'll dig into the end. To be fair as well, the lad will run all day for you and put a shift in for you all day. So I'll give him a seven point three. Um, the core eight. Just looking at his heat map, all over the pitch, all over the pitch today. 47 touches, pass accuracy 75%. Only actually won one of his eight ground deals, won one out of one aerial deals. So, so defensively not, not amazing. Um, but created some decent moments for us. Just doesn't stop running. His, his passing isn't amazing. It's not necessarily, actually, it's not necessarily his passing. It's more just like he'll find himself in situations and and it, and it's just it just doesn't play out necessarily the way you want it to play out. But no, I I thought he worked hard today, Decore. I thought he had a I thought he had a decent game. I thought the link, obviously playing that role between Dom and playing the, between the midfield, that's not an easy role. That that there's a lot of running in between that space. But he was all over the pitch today, and in fact, this. Biggest hotspot on his on his heat heat map is on the left hand side, so um I would give the Corey a seven point two for today's performance. Dominic Carvalhoon obviously got the winning goal. A threat. That's the thing with Dom. I think he's a, when he's when he's on it, he's a threat all the time. The defenders know that they've been in a game. Uh, played 89 minutes, won three of his five ground duels, won six of his nine aerial duels. He obviously scored the goal. He nearly got an assist as well with a great header. That w- that saw Decore um, go through, and his shot was saved. It was it was a decent shot as well. Um, but getting the winning goal, huge. Got his 50th goal for Everton. So congratulations for him on that. Um, and I would give him. He got the winning goal, so I'd give him an eight for today. So. It's just so nice to see to see that Dom back, isn't it? It's not always easy. He's going to have games where he's isolated, like last week in the Mayside Derby. But and it's hard for him then. It's hard for Dom when he's when he is isolated. He's not one of those players who's going to come back and track in and and. You know he's not he's not gonna fa- go deep and pick the ball up and start running and all that kind of thing. He's just you know he does what he does, and I think we all love him for it to be honest. So got the winning goal, hit the bar, but he would have been offside. He was offside, so an A for him. Uh, Schmidt come on wasn't on really long enough. Didn't have enough touches to really give him anything, so I'm not going to. Um, there you go. A good win. Happy with that. We move on to Wednesday night for a potential another victory which would get us through in the Carabao Cup and obviously big game against Brighton next weekend. So looking forward to that one now. Look, actually looking forward to a game at Goodison Park. Absolutely brilliant. There you go. Make sure you check out my internet interaction. Make sure you check out Baz's videos as well. We'll be live tomorrow, 1 o'clock over on YouTube. And uh, we'll be doing the final word on Toffee TV Premier as well tomorrow afternoon if you are not on that make sure you get on it the link is in the description qr codes come up on the screen now see you later